welcome to CC Gurukal live lecture. Uh, in fact, today's discussion we are going to devote on a thinker, a theorist, uh, which has uh, been the central reference point for political theory and political philosophy for you know uh, three, four decades, uh, and he is none other than John Rawls, Harvard philosopher who wrote a book in 1971, Theory of Justice and since then he has been setting the terms of discourse so far as justice and the normative discourse in political theory is concerned. In fact, John Rawls was born in 1921 and he died in 2002. In fact, uh, he was American political uh, liberal political theorist uh, who was tied to liberal philosophy and liberal values and based you know and he based his entire writings and ideas on the experiences uh, you know particularly from the western liberal world. Uh, in fact, uh, since the publication of his book Theory of Justice uh, which was done in 1971, uh, in fact, he has been the important reference point for any discussion on justice. In fact, of course, before the publication of this book, uh, in fact, he had written few papers. Uh, particularly the paper you know justice as fairness and he had circulated it and had also got lot of responses and criticisms. But finally, he decided to put all his ideas on justice in this book in 1971. In fact, whether you agree with him or you disagree, but one thing is quite clear that you cannot ignore John Rawls so far as any discussion on justice is concerned today. In fact, uh, so far the context uh, of uh, John Rawls is concerned and the context of his writings. Uh, in fact, uh, you know first of all uh, let us have what are the writings uh, you know he produced uh, in his very uh, long and uh, eventful and fruitful uh, academic journey. The first book was Theory of Justice as I just now mentioned published in 1971. The second book was Political Liberalism which was published in 1993 and the third book was Laws of the People which was published in 1999. And in all three you find altogether a uh, different uh, you know structure and different argument of course, but they are tied together. In fact, political liberalism to great extent uh, in fact uh, was the response uh, to critics particularly the critics who you know attacked John Rawls for his arguments in theory of justice. And in laws of the people, uh, in fact, he raises this entire discourse to larger global plane, uh, because the two principles of justice, which we'll be discussing shortly, uh, which you know in this book theory of justice were meant for uh, you know uh, for a domestic sphere uh, within the boundaries of the within the boundary uh, borders of the state. Uh, in fact, in laws of the people, he tries to engage with the larger uh, global situation in post uh, Cold War and you know in era of globalization particularly uh, you know the how uh, you know the just world order can be created. So, therefore, these are the three important writings uh, you know associated with John Rawls which have set uh, the terms of discourse in political theory. In fact, the first book was a product of the dwindling confidence of people in liberal order particularly in the USA in the backdrop of Vietnam war and the students protest which uh, you know ensued. Uh, in fact, uh, through this book he tried to address some of the crises of confidence uh, which uh, you know uh, scholars and uh, you know particularly uh, you know the sympathizers of uh, liberalism uh, found within the liberal order and liberal society. In fact, the second book as I mentioned uh, you know I have mentioned just now was his response to the critics particularly the communitarians, uh, particularly the communitarians who uh, attacked Rawls for uh, ignoring. Uh, you know the communitarian aspect of human identity and personality uh, and that was perhaps his response. And as it is in, a, in response to his critics uh, one find that Rawls also modifies some of his positions uh, which he had taken in his first book theory of justice. The third one the laws of the people as I mentioned uh, was the result of the emerging challenges of the new world order in post cold war period and the era of globalization. So, this is how we can contextualize uh, his writings and also uh, you know we can see that how John Rawls uh, was responding to the emerging challenges 
uh, of uh, liberalism and liberal political order. In fact, there have been many influences and all political uh, you know, thinkers and theorists of repute uh, have uh, been uh, under influences of uh, their predecessors uh, or the great traditions in political philosophy and political thought and Rawls is no exception. In fact, if we look at the influences on John Rawls, then we find that the most important influence was the influence of the contract tradition in political theory. When I say contract tradition, I essentially mean the social contract theory associated with Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau and also Kant. So, therefore, in fact, the three of them of course are the pioneer, uh, but Kant also uh, you know to great extent was uh, you know uh, advocate of this contractual uh, you know uh, argument. Now, you know if the positive law and uh, positive justice uh, came to John Rawls from Locke, uh, in fact, he picked up this idea of common good uh, from Rousseau being a liberal and individualist, he perhaps picked up this idea of common good uh, from Rousseau and from Kant, uh, he picked up individual as a moral category, uh, particularly self-respect and dignity uh, which emphasize not much the way he emphasized liberty and equality in his principles of justice or in the primary goods, but nonetheless this category of self-respect and dignity uh, come to uh, Rawls from Kant. So, these are some of the influences. But one thing uh, we should also remember that Rawls developed his entire theory of justice uh, in opposition to uh, or one can say uh, a, 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 as a kind of uh, you know response to uh, the three important traditions uh, which existed on you know on justice on discourse of justice. And these three traditions uh, happen to be utilitarianism, uh, greatest happiness of the greatest number, fallacific calculation uh, calculus as associated you know associated with uh, Bentham, uh, you know James Mill and others and the perfectionism of Aristotle and of course, Marxism. So, these were the three traditions uh, particularly uh, one can say that uh, Rawls responded to and therefore, one cannot ignore uh, the you know because when you are responding to some tradition that that also influences you greatly. Even if you disagree, you attack, but nonetheless you are engaging with those traditions. So, Rawls engaged with these traditions, particularly utilitarianism as it comes very sharply in his book. He attacked utilitarianism and this entire discourse associated with this school of thought. Uh, in fact, uh, you know many uh, scholars believe that when Rawls wrote this book at that time because of the dwindling confidence of people in the liberal uh, social order. In fact, utilitarianism as a philosophy was uh, becoming very popular. So, therefore, that became the important reference point for Rawls. In fact, uh, Rawls one can also say you know one can also uh, you know uh, uh, see that how Rawls is making a comparative analysis and in fact, he is trying to prove that his theory is more rational and just compared to others. When he dismisses utilitarianism, when he dismisses perfectionism or when he dismisses Marxism, he is making a comparative analysis and he is trying to demonstrate that how his theory of justice is more rational, he is more just and therefore, people under the spell of rationality would accept it. In fact, in this sense, one can say that Rawls is more Hobbesian than Lockean. Uh, or for that matter uh, you know any other influence on him because uh, you know as Hobbes he argues that people in hypothetical original position uh, as per Rawls uh, Rawls's uh, you know scheme of things uh, people will choose his theory of justice that is Rawls's theory of justice which he calls justice as fairness in place of other theories as human beings are guided by reason and under a spell of uh, rationality they will choose something which is fair and just and therefore, uh, Rawls believes that his theory will uh, basically win the day. Uh, but one thing is very clear that he is open that if some other theory, if some other argument uh, is offered and uh, it becomes more uh, rational and just then you know the people may choose that theory instead of uh, Rawlsian theory of justice. So, therefore, this is how he perhaps tries to establish that by doing a comparative analysis or comparative study, comparative analysis uh, in fact uh, and also relying on this uh, rationality of individuals, human beings uh, you know he believes that his theory will definitely score over all other existing theories. So, therefore, you know as a too liberal uh, particularly in terms of belief in the uh, rational thinking or rational behavior of individuals, but there are many liberal characteristics in his 
thought and basically that will come out in course of our uh, discussion. Uh, in fact, like Hobbes who had argued that in a state of nature, a uh, people's preferred absolutism or absolute government and that government was preferred because of uh, you know the rationality of individuals uh, because it was cho chosen by rational human being it was not on the spur of the moment but it was well calculated rational uh, you know thinking of human beings in a state of nature they, they thought that absolute government would ensure a uh, life a uh, liberty and also basically uh, the, the, that will help them to preserve their life. So, basically a self interested individual guided by rationality the way chose absolute government in a state of nature in Hobbes perhaps in original position in Rawls the same type of uh, factors impinge on human behavior and they uh, go for a theory of justice which Rawls calls justice as fairness. Now, the, so far as the reasoning is concerned uh, in fact in Rawls uh, that reasoning is comparative because you know he does uh, he is you know he presents his theory uh, you know in, in opposition to uh, the existing theories of justice particularly the dominant existing theories of justice and three of them I have already outlined. Uh, in fact, reasoning is comparative and the principles are just not because everyone has consented. But, but, but because it is rational. In fact, uh, the way perhaps this hypothetical state of nature in contract theory uh, that you know it is not historically to be judged whether everyone consented or not particularly in Hobbes, but because it was rational and therefore it becomes just. So, therefore, in the same way one can see also happening in Rawls's argument. Now, coming to the principles of justice before I mention the method and other uh, you know important uh, premises in his theory of justice. First of all, let me uh, you know put at this stage the two principles of justice which he called justice as fairness. Fairness. What are those two principles of justice? Uh, in fact, as I mentioned earlier that this initially emerged in form of a paper and later of course, it was put in book form. Now, these two principles uh, which uh, Rawls talks about uh, in his this in his book theory of justice. The first is that each person is to have an equal right to the most extensive liberty compatible with similar liberty for all. So, therefore, here you can see that how he is basically emphasizing the liberty aspect in justice. And the second principle which has of course, two components is that social and economic inequalities, inequalities are to be arranged so that they are both a to the greatest benefit of the least advantaged and b that they are attached to the positions and office open to all under conditions of fair equality of opportunity. The catch word is equality of opportunity. So, in first principle liberty comes out sharply, the second of course, has two components the first one of course, that inequality in the interest of least advantage what normally we call in contemporary parlance positive discrimination and the B what has come out as equality of opportunity another cardinal principle of liberalism not equality of outcome, but equality of opportunity as some of the later egalitarians within liberalism have been arguing that it is equality of outcome which is more uh, to be emphasized on equality of opportunity, but here we can see that Rawls does not go that extent and therefore, even if uh, he is trying to sound egalitarian in fact, he is not talking about equality of outcome rather he is talking about equality of opportunity. In fact, in the first principle, uh, the first principle is the principle of liberty and you know he says that it has a lexical priority over equality. What is lexical priority? In fact, this comes from the word lexicon, uh, which is basically a uh, you know synonymous dictionary. So, in a dictionary, A will always be coming before B and B will always come before C, so far entry is concerned. So, therefore, that is the lexical priority. Now, in his theory, he uses the same uh, you know principle and he says that liberty is a lexical uh, priority over equality and equality of opportunity is prior to difference. So, therefore, here you can see that a liberal in laws uh, coming out uh, you know forcefully and sharply. For example, he is prioritizing liberty over equality and equality of opportunity over difference that is basically that inequality is to be arranged for the benefit of the least advantage what normally today we call social justice or positive discrimination that how equality of outcome 
uh, you know is important and number two that how the least advantage uh, should be uh, you know helped supported uh, you know through the resources of the society particularly those who can afford and their resources should be diverted in the interest of the least advantaged. So, therefore, this difference principle which he says that uh, social and economic inequalities to be arranged and with two conditions that first they are attached to the offices in institutions which are open to all under condition of equality of opportunity and number two that they are in the interest of least advantage. That means, any departure you know from equality is permissible only if it helps uh, the least advantage, but so far as the priority principle of Rawls is concerned it comes at the bottom. First comes liberty, then comes equality of opportunity and then finally, this difference principle. Now, the principles of justice as I have been you know uh, you know I, I, as I am mentioning uh, right now in Rawls is the standpoint of justice is not the standpoint of least advantage. In fact, this is not something that you know uh, you know the people's heart or you know the heart of Rawls is bleeding for those uh, who are least advantaged. Rather it is the standpoint of self interested person, it is a self interested standpoint and therefore, one can find here a conceptual innovation uh, by Rawls. What is this? That normally we believe that you know when you are talking about least advantaged, uh, you are basically guided by compassion, charity, you want to help that least advantaged. Uh, you know as a liberal conscientious person in society you want you know uh, some help for those who are disadvantaged, disprivileged. But here in Rawls you find a different standpoint. He is saying that in, you know, in original position when people choose this principles of justice and they choose a principle of justice which has a component of inequality. And therefore, sometimes people believe that how justice can be premised on the principle of inequality, but here inequality is premised in order to help the least advantage. And his argument is that it is not from the standpoint of least advantage that you are going to help with charity or your heart is bleeding for the least advantage, but it is a self interested standpoint. And this is something very interesting. What is the self interested standpoint? Because he believes that in original position when people are under spell of rationality and also operating under veil of ignorance which I will be discussing shortly you know they believe that today someone is uh, you know least advantaged tomorrow he or she can be in that position. Because in fact a person under spell of rationality you know um, you know hypothesizes a situation where anyone can land in that position tomorrow I may be in that position. Therefore, you know one wants to secure uh, you know that position the least advantage position for against a rainy day. So, therefore, that is the argument and is the conceptual innovation uh, in Rawls one can say that this uh, you know the difference principle that the principle of uh, you know inequality to be arranged for the interest of least advantage this principle enters uh, from uh, the point of view of self interest of the individuals and here you can see the another. Uh, you know feature of a uh, liberal uh, theory and liberal mind uh, coming out uh, through Rawls, particularly the rationalism, particularly the rationality of individual and number two the self interested nature or character of individual. These two features particularly human nature the way the liberals have understood human nature Rawls is no different. So, as a self interested rational person when they confront different theories of justice Rawls argues that you know the people in original position where they are basically not aware about their identity and many other things they basically choose principles of justice simply on basis of the rationality they possess and that rationalism dictates that they should choose the principles which are all presents justice as fairness with having three components liberty, equality of opportunity and difference. And this difference principle as I mentioned just now is basically the self interested standpoint that people are choosing it because it is in their interest. Because today uh, in fact today uh, you know someone else is this you know uh, least advantage tomorrow someone uh, else could also be in the similar position. So, therefore, here we can see the conceptual innovation being made. Now, the principles of justice uh, in fact, as I mentioned that it is not that uh, your heart is bleeding for the least advantage, but because you may be in that position also. 
human beings are as a conservative risk taker is basically emphasized here uh, by Rawls because human beings are averse to risk. They do not want to take risk. They play safe. So, therefore, it is always safer to have a principle in which some uh, you know security, some protection to the least advantage as anyone may land up in that position in which today someone else is there, tomorrow you may be in the same position. So, therefore, here one can say it is a self interest in service of universality that by entering through the you know prism or entering through self interest he is basically trying to universalize his principle of justice. So, self interest is here in the service of universality. The principles of justice therefore in Rawls are liberty, opportunity, the income and wealth and self respect and all are to be distributed equally because distribution is at heart of justice. But unless unequal distribution helps everyone then only perhaps this inequality is to be allowed and permitted. So, departure from equality permissible only when it helps the least advantage. So, this is how the principles of justice uh, you know Rawls uh, you know advocates and uh, presents in his book Theory of Justice.